Social entrepreneurs don't generally set out to incite protests or topple despots, but they are revolutionaries nonetheless. They understand that wars can be waged by a thousand cuts, that crimes against humanity occur when millions of children die of diarrhea or tetanus, when medicine fails the poor, when education squanders young educators and sacrifices its young. And they refuse to accept that this is reality, the status quo, just the way things are. They know better, and they set out to make it so. The 2011 Skoll Award winners we honor tonight offer scalable, proven solutions to these toughest of problems and to the unacceptable conditions of poverty and injustice that breed and sustain them. Jeff, will you please join me on stage for our awards presentation? First up, Rebecca Oney, Health Leads. Rebecca Oney recognized the compounding effects of poverty on illness, designed a protocol, and set about to cure a sick system. With Dr. Barry Zuckerman of Boston Medical College, Rebecca founded Health Leads to bridge the health gap between medicine and social work. Health Leads expands the capacity of clinics and hospitals to meet the underlying needs of poor patients. Doctors prescribe support services along with medication, and Health Leads volunteers connect patients to sources of food, housing, job training. In other words, to sources that can accelerate their healing and keep them healthy. Within 90 days, the majority of patients served by Health Leads have secured at least one essential resource, and 83% of its volunteer graduates have gone on to jobs or advanced study in the fields of health and poverty. Rebecca Oney, Health Leads. In October of 1995, I walked into the waiting room of a chaotic, busy urban clinic. The TV I distinctly remember played this endless reel of cartoons, and the exhaustion of mothers who had taken two, three, and sometimes four buses to bring their children to the doctor was palpable. The doctors, it seemed, never really had time for all the patients. And over the course of six months, I would corner them while they were scrawling notes in the medical record or swallowing their lunches in the hallway. And I would say to them, if you had unlimited resources, what is the one thing you would give your patients? And they said the same thing again and again and again, a story we have now heard hundreds of times. They said, you know, every day we have patients who come into the clinic child has an infection and we give the family medicine, but the truth is, I know there's no food at home. The truth is, I know this family is living with 13 other people in two bedrooms, and I don't even ask about those issues because there is nothing that I can do. On those issues, we practice a don't ask, don't tell policy. And in fact, in that clinic, it is true. The patients pile up in the waiting room, the doctors have just a few minutes, and they would say, I don't know where to find food for the patients, and I have no help in doing so. In that clinic, there is one social worker for 24,000 patients. This clinic, to be clear, is not in Lima, it is not in Nairobi, it is not in Bogota, and it is not in Port-au-Prince. It is in Boston, Massachusetts, in the shadow of Harvard Medical School, the epicenter of some of the fanciest and most expensive healthcare in the world. And indeed, in cities across the country, in Harlem, New York, Southeast Washington, DC, the South Side of Chicago, and other, other clinics throughout the country, this is the way healthcare is delivered. And it shows. 
In the communities where Health Leads works in Baltimore, Maryland, the life expectancy is lower than it is in Bangladesh. So let me be plain here. The impact of poverty on health is not a developing world issue. It is not a developed world challenge. It is a challenge that is faced by poor people everywhere they live in the world. Health Lead's response is simple, it is cheap, it is effective. We enable physicians to write prescriptions for basic resources like food, housing, and heat alongside prescriptions for medication. Patients then take those prescriptions to our desks in the clinic waiting room where we have a core of 700 college volunteers who fill those prescriptions by connecting patients out to the resources that they need. Over the next three years, Health Leads will create 25,000 successful resource connections for low-income patients and their families. But our goal is not merely to serve more patients. The goal is to change the way that healthcare is delivered so that doctors can prescribe solutions that improve health just as they prescribe prescriptions that will enable families to manage disease. This is our vision, and this is why the Skoll Award is so important. HealthLead's model is a distinctly non-innovative approach. The purpose of the award is to allow us to follow in the footsteps of and to learn from Paul Farmer, Vera Cordero, Jean Fock, Mitch Besser, and so many others in this room who share our vision for the way that healthcare should be delivered everywhere across the globe. What Health Leads has been able to show is that if you put a couple of volunteers in a clinic waiting room, you empower physicians to ask the real questions of their patients, and you create a next generation of frontline healthcare providers and leaders who really will change the healthcare system. A couple of weeks ago, I had the chance to talk to Mia Lozada, one of our alumni who's now a medical school student, and spent three years as an undergraduate working in that same clinic at Boston Medical Center. She said, when my classmates write a prescription, they think their work is done. When I write a prescription, I think, can the family read the prescription? Does the family have transportation to the pharmacy? Do they have uh, money to pay for the prescription? And do they have food to take with it? Those are not questions that I learned in medical school. Those are questions that I learned with health leads. Thank you.